Manhaj that are dalla, that you have manhaj that are in opposition of the manhaj of al sunnah wal jama'ah. But they don't care about those things. They don't care about those things. All they want is what? Recruiting people. So at the end of the day, they have the majority in the, in the vote. That's all. What you do outside of that. Yeah, I don't care. That's, that's very true. That's very true. And this is something that, alhamdulillah, is important for all of us to take heed to it. That the person of the sunnah, walhamdulillah, he got to be clear. Very clear. He does not, when we say he doesn't mix with the people of innovation, this is the reality. You go to the, to the, to the, to the, to the, back in the history of the salaf, that they will, they will be very severe against the person that claimed the sunnah that mixed with the people of innovation than being stern against the people of innovation themselves. Because there is no barakallah fikum. It is when a person, as Shaykh Yahya al Najmi, Shaykh Ahmed al Najmi, he mentioned, if a person of the sunnah or if a person go to every masajid, that he is mixing the truth and falsehood. He is mixing between the truth and falsehood. He is mixing between the truth and falsehood. Right? This masjid, they are Sufi. That masjid, they are Quburiyun. This masjid, they are Tablighi. This masjid, they are Ikhwani. So if you feel like, okay, it's okay to go to any masjid, as long as they pray. Nobody is nobody saying don't pray. Nobody saying don't pray. But Barakallah fikum. Shaykh Rabi Hafidahullah, in the very beginning of the book, he mentioned a point that was very important. That we asked the brothers to memorize and to underline. When he was talking about the companion, he said, Bihim Nuwali, wa bihim Nuadi. That by way of the companion, we have allegiance. Who do we associate ourselves with? And who we do not associate ourselves with? Who do we associate ourselves with? And who we do not associate ourselves with. If a person, alhamdulillah, they clear upon Salafiyya, walillah, alhamdulillah, minna, they are your brothers. They are your close relatives. They are your people. But if someone, barakallah, fikum, is other upon Salafiyya, and more so those who they want to take, they want to take the garment of Salafiyya. And they want to impress you by a little bit of Arabic here, a little bit of this or there, a little bit of that there. And this is not something that Barakallah Fikr we should buy. Alhamdulillah, this is why patiently restrict yourself to the Sunnah. Wasbir nafsaka ala Sunnah. Patiently restrict yourself to the Sunnah. Waqif haythu waqaf al qawm. And stop where the people stop. For indeed, for indeed what sufficed them will suffice you. For indeed, what suffice them will suffice you. But not to mix and mingle, Barakallah, and he brought that point, not to mix and mingle among those. How a pre people will be claiming Salafiyya, but you find everyone else, right, and their own methodology, and their own aqil, and their own manhaj in the administration. This one, he doesn't have no problem with the Sufi. If you talk about the Sufi, he's upset. He might even want to chase you out the masjid. This one, if you want against innovation, he will be at, he will be mad at you. That you are telling the brother Akhi Barakallah Fiq, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, didn't have no dhikr bees. Use your hands. Or the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he prayed with his hands on his chest. Pray your hands with your chest. Don't pray your hands with your on, on your side. The Prophet sallam, he did not never cut his lahya, but rather he let it grow and he ordered the people to let it grow. Now if they see you giving this nasiha to another person, look, they're upset at you. And they say, you're harsh. Let, let, leave, leave them alone. Akhi, what is harsh about that? And you, alhamdulillah, it is not maybe like 
you know, somebody that is known of being a troublemaker. But this is maybe somebody that Barakallah Fikum. Nobody ever heard his voice being loud. He is coming at him and telling him, Ba'akhi, Barakallah, Jazakallah Khair, even give him a gift, give him an oil. He say, You harsh. For what? For telling him this is the Sunnah, this is innovation. So we will not, Barakallah Fikum, be amazed by just people or Sunnah. Some people even to say Salafiyah is, is heavy upon their tongue to say Salafiyah. To, call, to name the scholars that are alive is, is, is a burden upon them. You ask them about the present day scholars, it's, it's, it's almost you're going to give them a heart attack. But they will always quote you Ibn Taymiyyah. They will always quote you even those who die. They will quote them now. Sheikh Ibn Abbas, Sheikh Uthaymin. They will quote them today. But when they were alive, they would not quote them. And I, I, I know individuals. At the time that Sheikh Uthaymin was alive, I know individuals at the time that Sheikh Uthaymin was alive, listen, they will not mention their names. It was a big empty hand for them. If they hear the Shia Uthaymin rahimahullah, they will not like, they will not even say the name. But today you hear them say the name. Why? Because it's a hiding point. It is to disguise what they want to disguise. It is to barakallah fikum, those who are weak in their aqeedah, those who are weak in their manhaj ma'adhira, that they want to recruit them and this is how they will f fool them. So it is important, barakallah fikum, that the person of the sunnah, he patiently restrict himself to with the people of the sunnah and to be patient with that right because you rather be patient with the sunnah than be patient with what because if you don't be patient with the sunnah you're going to be patient with the opposite of it if you're not patient with the people of the sunnah listen you will not have no no choice but to be patient with the people of innovation no doubt about that Insha'Allah ta'ala we suffice ourselves with this until next week bi idhnillahi tabaraka wa ta'ala. If there was any mistake, please rectify me. May Allah rectify you. Let everybody mention one thing and we close out, insha'Allah. Nabda bil yameen. Right, by way of the companion, we associate ourselves and disassociate with our, uh, ourselves. The, the ruling, yes. Yes, the ruling, meaning the, 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 the judge, right? The judgment is only by Allah. No. You are safe, yes. If you disapprove disapprove of what the ruler does bad, you are safe. But inshallah, in the next sitting, perhaps we will talk about how safe it is. Right, to be in the circle of the people of the Sunnah. What, do we, what a person can gain in being in the circle of the people of the Sunnah? That's one. Number two. Number three. Somebody help. You will benefit them. You will benefit them. And they will benefit you. Okay, any others, you approach them two twice about rectification, they will not want to hear you no more. They will not want to see you no more. But a person in the Sunnah, any time you rectify him, he loves to see you. Because what? You will, he know that with this brother, Alhamdulillah, I will, I will, you know, I will be, I will be unchecked. And you will not see yourself above being placed unchecked. You won't go to any Salafi masajid, approach the mudarris or the imam or the like salat, and give them nasiha, tell them, "Akhi, akhtaqta." Do you think that they will come on the minbar and blast and 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 and, and blast you? But do it to other other masajid. Okay, they will they will call the popo on you. They will escort you out the masjid. Go to 40th Street and tell the Imam you made a mistake on the khutbah. Man, you this is done. Are you coming to discredit our Imam now? Right. 
Right, correcting Barakallah a person that is doing innovation should not be seen as harsh, but rather take the correction first. As long as they pray, we don't go against them and we don't say nothing against them neither. Right, they asked the Prophet Sallallahu to advise them, uh, meaning, should we go against them? They say, no, as long as they pray. Right, it doesn't matter how the, the, the level of, of fisk it rich. Now look at the word that the Sheikh mentioned. He didn't say kufr. He said what? Fisk. Right, he said fisk. He didn't say kufr. He said fisk. It doesn't matter the level of evil, open evil action. Because sometimes al fisk, that it could be translated as open evil action. It doesn't matter how much of evil that he openly do in the eyes of the people. It is not to be revolting against him. Question. I'm asking the question, not you. Um, what kind of punishment do those people who try and get the lead, try and be the leader, what kind of punishment they would get if they uh, help? Say it one more time. Um, those, you just mentioned those people trying to be like the leader of the country or the government. Why do you why don't you think that they will have a reward? Um, because leave the, leave, leave the, the, uh, leave, leave the Islam behind the back. Right, I understand what you're trying to say. But alhamdulillah, one thing is this, right? Here what the Sheikh was talking about was people that had slogans and they were even talking about the revolution in the name of Islam. But when they came in power, they neglected their religion. The hadith that Barakallah Fikum, we will study next week, was that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Awfu, that fulfill what they ask you. And Allah will ask them of their responsibility. So for that, we will leave it to Allah. Because if we open that door, now some people, they can take it and run with it. By saying that this, you're going to go to the hellfire, this. No, but rather the ruler, even if he is evil, we make dua for him. We make dua for him. Even if he's evil, even if he's righteous, we make dua for the ruler. And we'll not say that you're going to go to the hellfire. Allah. And this is not something that is not befitting for any Muslim that is upon Islam. That you're going to tell him you're going to the hellfire. Or your punishment will be in the hellfire this and the third. If you're not patient with the people of the Sunnah, you'll be patient with the people of Sunnah, be patient with the people of innovation. Abu Sufyan. Right. We come together upon what we agree and we pardon one another, excuse one another of things that we disagree. That the hadith of Umm Salama radiyallahu anha, that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he say it will be upon you, meaning on, on you, meaning those who will be on, those that you will be under them, meaning the umara, right? That they will be doing things that you approve and things you disapprove of. So those who barakallah that you approve, that you are pleased with, but the matter is not even there. The matter is those things that you disapprove. Now, how do we disapprove it? Imam Muslim, rahimahullah ta'ala, will tell us how to disapprove of the ruler. You got to be good to the Muslim ruler, no matter what. No matter how he got to the power, barakallah. How do a Muslim ruler reach power? How do a Muslim ruler reach power? How do a Muslim ruler reach power? By fighting, yes. By by the people gathering together, selection. Huh? 
I think you already say one. 